Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged. Now, if you watch this channel, you know I absolutely love lasers. I, I think about them all the time. It's just what I do. It's what I love. Well, my single favorite thing to do on a laser is leather, specifically leather wallets. I love everything about the process. I especially love the sewing, which some people may like, some people may not. I just, I find it one of the most zen things that you can do just to sit by the computer watching uh, my favorite YouTubers <laughs> and uh, sew wallets. And uh, just the whole process is really nice. So I'm going to go through that process. I've been meaning to do this for a while. I did a video, it was well over a year ago, that's very popular about doing a, you know, step-by-step -step guide to making a leather wallet. Well, I've learned a lot. I've made hundreds of these. I have more designs, etc. So uh, I am going to redo that and go more in depth. So this will be a pretty in-depth video. Uh, but if you love lasers at all, CO2, Dio, doesn't matter. Uh, like, subscribe, and uh, I will definitely have something on this channel that you can learn from. And I hope to learn from you. Uh, please leave a comment as well and let me know what you're looking for. I'm thinking by the end of this video, you should feel comfortable making a wallet. And I have several different versions. As I said, I'm going to go through the kind of a medium difficulty. It's not difficult at all. You should be able to do it. And if you can, then you should be able to do all of the other ones. You, as far as lasers go, if you have a 10 watt laser or above, you should be able to do this. It's one of the nice things about lasers. Most lasers will be able to handle it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go down below and get pick, pick the file. Uh, there are many different ways to get it. I have just this file with my original step-by-step -step video in there. And I also have this in my best sellers pack and it leather and lasers, my best files. Uh, that will give you all of my leather files, including this uh, pocket wallet here, which is really good, very minimalist that you can make whether with leather, you can even add wood. They're, it's really fun. You can see I've made a lot of different versions of this. Very simple and very nice. Obviously, this wallet we're doing today, I have made a gazillion of. And I just realized I am almost out of them, which is really nice because I get to sit around and make some more and I get to show you. But uh, I have they have worked really, really well for me. I run a laser business. It's all I do. I have no other side businesses other than laser stuff. This is a little card wallet that uh, I designed as well. So all of those would be included in that and also the keychain files so that you can make some wood or leather keychains fairly simply. So with that out of the way, just, just make sure that you have this particular one like i said it comes with many of my bundles here and we will get started something else we could talk about air extraction um by the way i'm going to go step by step with the actual pattern and everything right through light burn your your software or whatever uh through making it but i want to go over you know some of the things you might want to think about air extraction if you've just got the stock fan uh, for air extraction and you can already smell a little bit of smoke, good chance that you are going to smell leather and oftentimes it is not the most pleasant smell. So I personally love this fan. Uh, you know, it's not that expensive. It goes on sale quite a bit again, 10% off here. Um, I'm gonna try and put a link for every single thing that I talk about uh, in the description. But I, you know, I don't have an affiliate for this. This is, these are literally the things that I buy, as you can see right here. Uh, and I get the six inch, inch version and it takes out every little bit of smoke that I have. So uh, I tend to believe that if you wanna put it at the window or outside to suck the air out of your laser, it actually works better than if you put it right at the laser pushing the air out of outdoors. 
And if you really think about why that would be better, you can, because if there's any holes between the two, if you're sucking it, even that it's even going to pull air into those holes instead of pushing it out of those holes. You see what I'm saying? So there's your first tip that might already help a lot of you. But there are lots of good fans on the market. I just happen to really love this one, and I've used several of them. I really like the dial that you can just go either way, and it, it just it works for me. The leather. Where are you going to get leather? Now, I personally, and it's not because I'm snooty or whatever, I only use Italian leather, veg tan. Now, of course, I would recommend veg tan because I feel like the other leathers really don't cut as well. And obviously, they can have fumes and things like that. Now, as far as you not having to get Italian leather, I bought a lot of different kinds. And it just seems to work better for me. It's just so consistent. And obviously, it looks better. It feels better. But it is expensive. And... All leather is just expensive. So unless somehow you're getting it really cheap, you know, this is not a, the cheapest hobby in lasers, <laughs> but it is very rewarding and you can make higher end products. As far as the thickness goes, you know, two millimeter is nice, maybe a little bit less for some of you. I like to make my wallets very thin, so I'm getting the three ounce, but actually five ounce is probably going to feel a little bit more hefty. So it kind of is up to you. You can make it any thickness you want. Uh, but between three and five ounce, so 1.5 millimeter to two millimeter seems to work out really well. Now I buy it by the half hide like this, which is expensive. And so you got to really figure out, okay, what colors am I going to use the most? I love this chestnut. And then I end up using the yellow a lot. And typically these, these colors are going to be a little bit darker than they look here. So if you look at a blue or something, this is going to be kind of how you see it in the edges. It's going to be kind of a dark, dark, darker blue. Uh, so they do sell samples and whatnot, and you might be able to get it cheaper. Uh, I use Rocky mountain leather supply just because i think overall it's just the best deal you get free shipping with over 100 bucks i'm not affiliated with them either i wish i was or one of these buckle guy is also a nice place i like their shipping i like everything about them but they're often out of what i want or uh, you don't get free shipping on the particular thing that i want or whatever so in the end i have just ended up going with make Le Le leather rocky mountain leather supply so like I said, again, you can get uh, much smaller. You can get these in panels and they will be from 12 to $42 as it shows. I think if you had one square feet, you could make this particular file. Uh, I've lined them all up here in this picture. You can see how much leather each one takes. Now, of course, with my card wallet, uh, that one, the center could be made out of wood or acrylic, which would take away a lot of the leather costs there. But then you can't put as much stuff into it. It just kind of depends what you're looking for. But for this particular one, you can see there about, I think, a foot of leather. I always buy it uh, by the two square feet. Now, as far as tools and thing and like that goes, uh, you can go crazy buying leather tools and you will end up spending a ton of money on things you don't actually need. And when you are doing it on a laser and if you're using thin leather, it automatically takes away quite a few of the tools that you might need to buy. So if you watch this video all the way through, I will be showing you all of the tools that I use. And of course, they'll be listed below in the description. So that, you know, you figure out which tools you want to buy and you need. And you can always get more if you really love this and you want to do a lot more of it. Now, for me, what I like to do, the very first thing is just make a, I make a wallet out of foam, <laughs> you know, but I'm doing prototypes and things like that. So I need to make sure everything lines up and you got to do, do it all. But this could be a way for you to test and make sure that, uh, you know, everything is working okay on your laser. 
Uh, I cut the pattern first out in foam and then I actually glue it together just like you would an actual wallet. And it's actually, you can use it. And you can do this with any of my patterns. You can cut it out, glue it together, and it should work just like a perfect wallet. You can put your cards in it. You can do anything. So just a tip, if you want to save some money and you're practicing, uh, you can make things in foam first. And maybe you can use this for some other pattern you're doing, just to check. Obviously, leather is extremely expensive, so just trying to find ways to not mess up. So not only do I sell these wallets, um, I also um, use it as my personal wallet. So I know that it works. It's been my wallet for years. So I know that it's good. It's good quality. It holds up the whole kabang. Um, so I'm going to give you now the tips for actually putting it together. The first thing you're going to do, obviously, you download the file. And if you're using Lightburn, it's going to look like this. A very easy file. There's really not a lot to it. You just make sure that it fits on your leather piece and you cut it out and it's, it should be good to go. You can decide if you want to keep this uh, thing for your thumb or not, or you could change it to a circle. You can do whatever. I, I often change this or maybe even put some initials behind it. There's lots of different ways to modify this. You have an engraver. You could put your initials, you can put, I put Valley Forged, right? You know, many, many things to do it. But the first one, I would just make it the way I'm making it, learn how to do it. And I think you'll be quite proud of it. So download the file. Of course, settings are on you. This is the one thing that I cannot do for you. And I get the questions no matter how many times I say it. But you're going to have to have at least a little bit of leather to test on to make sure that your settings are correct. I'm using the magnificent Rolly Lasermatic MK23010 watt XW. <laughs> it's a mouthful, but it's an amazing laser. It's behind me. It can do so many things. Of course, I have a link below for that, and it is an affiliate link. But I can have any laser I want. That's the one I choose to work with. And... There, when I cut out leather, there's literally just nothing on it. It is so clean. It's ridiculous that I don't have to do a lot of extra work after I cut it out, uh, which I had to do. I, for some reason on CO2 lasers, I can't seem to get the settings exactly perfect where I don't have some char, right? But for some reason, diode lasers to me work better. But they both work fine. I've made wallets from both uh, all the way up to 150 watt lasers. I've, I've made these wallets. But I find that the Rolly 3010 or even just a 10 watt wallet, but I use the 30 and it just cuts it out so absolutely cleanly. I still use a cleaner though. And that's kind of what the point I was getting to. You're cutting this out. First thing you're going to do is you are going to protect it. Now, if you have a, a laser that's at it, leaving a little bit of char, I suggest that you use a leather cleaner first. Now, I love the Meguiar's. I'm sure I have it up on the screen. Cleaner, protector, whatever. It's easy to get. It works great. And it's going to protect it from your fingers or anything else that's going to accidentally get on there during this process. And I think that's super, super important because I have ruined wallets, you know, by touching it, your oils, your hands or anything uh, you scratch, things like that. So it's best just to go ahead and protect it right away. But if you're noticing it has a good amount of char, what I would do is use a lint free cloth and use the leather cleaner and clean it off first and just let it dry. And then I come back and I use the Meguiar's leather cleaner protector. Now for the 3010, I can just use the cleaner protector. It's going to be great. And now it's protected. I feel much more, uh, much better about working with it now. And once I started doing that, doing the clean protect, because not only the cleaning gets rid of a lot of that stuff that you might actually smear somewhere. And then when you uh, are, you know, doing your sewing and things like that, it's not going to get everywhere. So that's pretty important. And now, so you've got this cut out and 
you've got uh, it cleaned and protected, right? Now you're going to, I'm going to tell you what thread that you're going to need. And, you know, we're not ready for that yet, but I do want to go ahead and mention that the Ritza Tiger thread is what I use, and I think it's just fantastic. I wouldn't bother using any other kind of thread. This is just, it's just so good. It's the best thread in the world. Now, there is like Lin cable you can get. That's really awesome, but you have to wax it yourself. There, it won't last as long. There are many reasons why I decided to go with Ritz Tiger Thread. I use the 0.8, but the 0.6 is really good if you want to make a more feminine looking wallet or feminine looking thing. And the 0.08, it's not super masculine, as you can see in my pictures, but it is a little thicker. You can get it in just, you know, big sets like I have, or you can buy it, you know, smaller amounts, just like you see here on Amazon. I tend to use the brown, but I also use a heck of a lot of yellow, and that's the one I'm going to be using today is the yellow. So I think that's all I have to say before we get into actually demonstrating how to make the wallet. So now I'm going to get on to that and I will see you at the leather. <laughs> okay, we're back over at the leather. I'm going to attempt to do an overhead cam thing. Hopefully this will work out for everybody. And as you can see, I have all of the pieces of leather. One, two, three, four, five. And I have them kind of where I want them to be glued together so of course this is the back side of the the big part so the very first thing you're going to need to do is you got to you're going to be gluing these together right so wherever you see that it you got to glue it together but it has the shiny nice part that part is going to have to be a little scuffed up because this part needs to go to this part. And so you're going to glue it. Now the part that's that's dull, you know, the more sandy part, uh, that is fine. You don't need to do anything to that. But wherever it's going to be on the face side of the leather and glue it, you need to scuff that up. Now, I did buy this, and I say it in a lot of my videos, it's the dumbest thing I ever purchased, but I do use it a lot. You could probably use a butter knife or some sandpaper or anything that you want. But for both of these, everywhere that the face leather is going to be touching, you're going to glue. So you want to make sure you don't go past it, though. What if you roughed up this part, which I have done before? You're going to be pretty upset with yourself. So let's find a way not to do that. I have this little punch here. You could use anything you want, though and just kind of make a mark of where it ends. And this part's pretty easy. I mean, you're probably only going to go to where the holes are. So I have a mark there. I'm going to start at that place because I don't want to make a mistake, All right? So I'm just going to start right there where that is. And I'm going to just rough up the area that's going to get glue on it. Not any other part, just the part that's going to get the glue. And if you're somebody who isn't really attention to detail, like I'm not, uh, you just slow down right now and make sure that you're doing this the right way. It is probably the only really frustrating part if you mess it up about this whole thing, really, other than getting it dirty when you don't want to. Okay, so it's really easy. Just rough it up. You're going to do the same thing with this. Uh, I'm going to mark both parts on this one. Right here and right here. And I will start again. You know, sometimes I, I know I'm a little over crazy, but sometimes I like to just do a little bit on both of them the line so I don't forget. And then I'll just go around the outside and kind of do that. I mean, the rest of this is going to be under the pocket, so you're not going to ever see this. And so now that that's scuffed up, it just makes the glue hold better. I mean, that's really the reason, right? 
So that part's done, which is pretty simple, right? Just what, just something you want to make sure that you do correctly. Now, if any of you have watched videos out there about leather and making wallets, you're going to know a lot of the times right here at the very top parts of the wallets, you may use an edge beveler. Here's one here. Now, when you're working with wallets as thin as I am, I have found that this is not a good idea because there's already such a little leather there to begin with that it you can end up making a mistake pretty easily. I have found, yeah, three to four ounce leather. It's just really not useful, but this is something you can do if you want to. And I just wanted you to know about it. But before you glue the pockets together, once you have glued these and sewn them, you are not going to be able to get to these parts to be able to uh, do anything. And what I'd like to do is make these edges black or whatever color you decide, but black of course is the easy way. And I use this fabric marker. It's cheap, it's easy. Uh, you, I'll put up a picture of it and it's come in use for so many things for edges that, you know, get messed up on your wood projects and things like that. I have two of them. One I use for leather only and then one for other types of projects. And what I like to do is I like to go from the backside because before, again, I've made a lot of mistakes. So I'm trying to tell you about all of them. If you're doing this from the front side and you slip and you hit that front part of the leather. Now you did protect it, so it's gonna be a little easier to get stuff off, but this is a permanent marker. You, it's just best not to do that. So what I do is I go from the backside. So if I slip, I'll just be hitting the backside of the leather. It's not gonna make a huge difference. And then I just go ahead and do that all black. And then you're just gonna go ahead and do that for all of the tops of your pockets. So no matter what file you're using, it's going to be the same for this step. Uh, tops of pockets, because you, again, for the outside, when it's all put together, you're gonna have access to that. And so you're gonna wanna do that later when it's all put together. But the tops of these pockets are gonna be sitting like so, and how are you going to get to that if you don't do it now? So that's, it's important, just the tops of the pockets and the inside of this hole, if you made one. Now, you may want to do a couple of coats of this. It's up to you. And then we're going to let it dry and we are going to use tokenol. Now, this is kind of like a gum, they say. It's for burnishing and protecting the edges of your leather. And everybody uses it. And I see no reason why you wouldn't want to just use this. It's not that expensive. One of these tubs will literally last you probably forever. And I have found no reason not to use it. Some people just use water, which is totally doable. Um, so what I'm going to do now that I've got these nice and black the way that I want them is I'm going to let them sit and dry uh, what I found in the past is if I didn't let these dry and then I rub the token all on there, I might get some of that black on the outside of my leather. It might come off on the token all and then rub into the leather itself, which is really no fun. So again, learn from my mistakes. So let's let that dry. And then what we're going to do is we're just in... After you've watched my video and you really know this is what you want to do, your finishing techniques can come from a lot better people that are specifically leather workers who have been doing this forever uh, than from me. But what you're going to want to do is put the token hole on there and then you're going to use a burnisher or there are other techniques. I think some people just use rags. <laughs> whatever you know if you want to save some money you don't necessarily always have to buy all the tools but once that token hole is on here then you're just going to rub this a little bit and it's going to make the edges not just shinier but also it's going to be sealed 
And you're going to want to do that before you glue it together. So let's go ahead and do all of those things and then meet me back here once that part is done. And then we will glue together these pockets. Now remember, do not glue everything together. You're only going to glue the pockets right now. Why? Well, because if you look here, you'll notice that there's four little holes right here at the top of this pocket. So if you were to go ahead and sew, I mean, glue everything together, how are you going to sew, again, learning from my mistakes, um, how are you going to sew that part together? You won't be able to. So what we're going to do is once we're done with the tokenol and the burnishing on the, the tops, we're going to glue these together and then we're going to sew only that part. And then we're going to glue the whole thing together. So that's what we're going to do when we're ready. So, and you won't have to do this kind of thing with most wallets. You can just glue it all together. But for this particular one, this is how it works. What I choose to use is Aquilim 315. Now, oh, I should mention on the burnishing. There are many really, really great videos out there on burnishing. I am not going to pretend that I am an expert, so I will leave a link below. For a video, I think is good, but there are many, many, many good ones out there. Um, no need to be an expert, but if you want to be, there is a lot out there to, to be. Now, as far as glues go, a lot of professionals use barge. Now, I don't particularly like barge. It smells really bad. I just don't like using it. Uh, I just feel like it's toxic. <laughs> And, uh, so I use Aqualim 315. Uh, I, I bought this years ago and I, it's still half, I guess still got half of it left. I mean, it will last you a very long time. I've never had it come apart. It's just worked really, really well for me. And I buy these by the box load of foam brushes that I use to just do gluing for everything. Just makes life so much simpler. So I'm just going to take this Aqualim 315. I'm going to go around only, of course, the areas that we scuffed and on the back side, right where it's going to be sewn. And then I'm going to glue these together. Now, once you glue them together, how do you keep them together? Now, a lot, you know, you've got it glued together. You want to make sure that everything is lined up as good as possible. It's one of the reasons why I really like this kind of punch that I can just stick this in through the two holes and make sure that it's completely lined up. And then I can go to the next one and do the same thing to make sure that the holes are lined up in pretty much all the corners. That's what I do after I've glued it and I kind of cinch it together. Then I do this in all the corners and it seems to really help. And then I just push it down with my fingers and uh, what a lot of professionals will do afterwards is take something like this or a little special hammer or something and just tap, tap, tap and around it to kind of seed it. Now, after a few years of doing that, I decided to get these pliers with, they have leather on them and I can just use those to, uh, once it's glued together, you could just use this to kind of push it together and... I just feel like it does such a better job and it just feels like everything is just perfect. Now this comes with some clips. I never use the clips for leather, but I've used the clips for all kinds of other projects. So it seems like a pretty good deal for me. Uh, that's of course optional. Like I said, even some of the most professionals don't use something like that. Uh, I just found better for me. So um, right now what we need to do is go ahead and glue this together and then we'll come back. Okay, so everything's glued together here. And then what you're gonna do is we just need to sew this little bit right here. So we don't need to cut too much thread. It's a little longer than this. Now, in the video that I'm going to show you with saddle stitching, they're also going to teach you how to set your needles, uh, which is very important. Once you learn how to saddle stitch, this is going to be such an amazing experience, but doing it the first time might be somewhat challenging. I do use a stitching pony, which I will put up in uh, a picture. And so I don't know how to do it without. I know some people do it without, 
Uh, it wasn't that expensive and it's been, it's been invaluable to me. I've been using it so much and I actually end up using it for some other things uh, when it comes to lasers. So that's been really nice. Now, so you're going to have, go ahead and make this much. Now I use what they call John James needles, but this, uh, see needles by John James and that comes with the thread. So you won't have to worry about that. And you can reuse the same needles for a super long time. Like these are still new because I use the old ones. And then what you're going to also do is once this, once you've sewn that little bit and you glue all of this together and pretty much at that point, you're going to have a wallet. Uh, you can sew it, right? you're going to sew it once it's all glued together. So you might as well though, while it's like this is measure the rest of your thread. So what I like to do, I have heard anywhere between three and a half and five times. The distance is how much thread you need. I do five little more even because I'm paranoid. I'd hate to get to the end of this and find out I didn't have enough thread. Fortunately, that is it's gotten close, but it's never actually happened. Now see, there's one. So you're measuring just the distance of the thread for this. And then you're going to go ahead and then double that up, double it up one more time. And then it should go one more. And so all together, you should end up with a little over five times if you want to, or three and a half, whatever you follow the video and whatever makes a sense for you. I'm sure it's not quite as long given that I use really thin leather. If you use thicker leather, obviously it's going to take a little bit more thread because you're going back and forth. So just think about that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the top of my pocket. Then I'm going to sew this part only with a saddle stitch. Uh, and then I'm going to, so I do end up using a lighter. So that's one other thing. It's just a regular old lighter I use to, um, and you'll see this in the saddle stitch videos of how to finish it. There are many different ways. I have used super glue at the very end just to hold it together. I have used a lighter and there's also a little zap machine that you can buy on Amazon. But regardless, we're going to do all of that. We're going to glue this. We're going to sew this. Then we're going to glue the wallet together and it should look like a wallet at that point. And then all we're going to have to do is sew the outer edges and then we're going to do the burnishing and finishing on the outside of the wallet. So I'll see you when we're all glued together and this is stitched in. Okay. You can see I did these threads here. Uh, I just burned the back with a lighter. Um, and that's how that should look. And when I start this particular edge on here, I usually start here and uh, that will become apparent later because you'd like to finish up over here. Cause you're going to have more, see how you have a double thread there. Now, if you've watched the video on how to saddle stitch, you'll see you've got to finish it. So I'd rather finish it on the side that doesn't have any stitching already. The other side doesn't matter at all. As you can see, I glued that together. It's on there. It looks great. So now I just got to glue this side on and uh, I'll do that. I'll do a little bit right where I show you. So I just take the, the brush with some glue on it and just hit the edges. If I got it kind of clumpy, I like to put it in different spots just so it's not all clumped up on one spot, one area. And then I can use that to brush it around because if you get it too clumpy, uh, it's going to come through the hole. And that could get on your leather or it could just be annoying when you're sewing. It's going to happen a little bit, but I would rather not do it too much. Now, remember, don't glue the area that you stitched there because that's going to be part of the pocket in the back. You're done with that part there. I have done that. And then I'm just going to do the same. You know, it's, this is one of the hardest videos that I make just because there it's going to be not enough information for some people and it's going to be way too much for others. So I try to get it in the middle a little bit and not overdo it. Maybe I could add a little music right here and, uh, 
get us to the next section. Okay, so now I just got to wait for this to dry and then I'm going to saddle stitch it all up and I will come back when that's done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to finish all of the edges and then we'll be done. All right, see you soon. Well, oh my goodness, what a gorgeous wallet we've got here. This is just, it's really beautiful. I, I'm... Every time I make them, I just love them. But the more that I make them, the better they get, obviously. And yeah, it's the first time this is going to seem like a long video and a long process. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. And I, yeah, this is, this is really, really fun for me. And just looking at the almost finished product just it just makes me so happy i'd be so happy to give this away as a gift or to sell it to somebody it's just it's lovely i lo <laughs> actually like to keep it for myself but uh you know not gonna do that i yeah yeah i do want to it's so nice but uh next thing we gotta do is uh, the edges again now what i would do is use some you know light sandpaper like 400 grit i'm guessing something around there and we're going to sand around the edges just to make sure everything is smooth and nice and then we're going to go back over it with the good old fabric marker and blacken that up now be extremely careful i mean you've got good leather on both sides of this. So you are going to want to make sure that you do not mark anything but the edges of that leather. Then we're going to let this dry and then we're going to tokenol burnish the edges of it and then we'll have a finished wallet. But just as it is, even if we didn't do a darn thing to it, would you know, people would be impressed, <laughs> but uh, we're going to finish it up and then I will show it to you with cards in it and everything and how the finished product looks. Okay. Now we're just finishing up the burnishing. Just make the edges look nice. I don't even know if that will show up, but it will in the pictures or videos that I do of the wallet so that you can see the final version and i hope that yours come out as good or better some of you out there are leather workers that are now going to use a laser and it's going to look even better but uh i you know i'm very happy with my wallets i love the way they look i love the way they come out feel free to try out all of my files i think they all come together real easy and if you can do this one, you can do any of them. And uh, once you get good at it, you know, make your own style. Put your own uh, flavor on this. Make your own little slot here. Put your initials. Put people's. Make some designs on these. There's so much that you could do. I just say that, hey, start out first and make sure that you get good at putting it together. And get to where you really enjoy the sewing. And uh, this is, yeah, I'll put some cards in here and show you a picture of the final version. But I'm very, very happy with it. And I'm happy that you're here with me witnessing it. And like I said, I hope you make better ones than I do. If you make this wallet, I would appreciate you putting a picture on the Etsy and, you know, showing me and everybody how it came out and the fact that you can do this. Again, like, subscribe, and tell me about your journey, and I will see you all in the next one. Love y'all.